Hey everyone, great to see you here live with me today. Everybody on Facebook, everybody on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, thank you so much for joining me. And this is Paul Fletcher, of course, and you are with The Healing Source. And this is podcast number four. We're in series two, and series two is for bringing healing to the emotions with Tao Healing. So this is the fourth in the series. And last week, uh, I did a program specifically around forgiveness. It was uh, very well received, and I encourage you to go back and listen to that again. And if you have not already subscribed to my podcast, please do so now. And so last week, we spoke quite a bit about the importance of forgiveness. This week, I'm going to go back into forgiveness, and we're going to be talking about the three uh, important ways in which you can do forgiveness practice. Every, um, every forgiveness practice that we do can significantly transform our suffering. For those of you that are new, I'll give a little backdrop uh, on Tao healing. Uh, Tao healing is a form of healing that um, it typically is transmitted through a Tao healer. It could, however, come through other mediums such as Tao calligraphy. And Tao healing uh, and the empowerments that come with it was brought to us through Dr. and Master Jigong Sha. And Dr. and Master Sha is a world-renowned healer. Uh, he's a humanitarian and the author of over 30 books. And Dr. and Master Sha has basically defined Tao healing as healing from the source. So when I started this podcast uh, about um, 10 weeks ago, uh, I gave the first eight weeks were dedicated to understanding the nature of Tao healing, uh, how it works, uh, the ins and outs of it, everything that you need to know. So again, if you missed that, subscribe, go back and watch those recordings that define what is Tao healing and how does it work. So today we are in podcast number four and we are uh, specifically working with emotions and how to transform emotions. As a reminder again for our newer audiences, the root cause of all suffering in life is the negative information that we hold at the level of our soul. Now, <clears throat> If I were to say that differently, it would be that every time we have a negative thought, a negative words that we say to others, or we offer negative actions, that creates a, a frequency and vibration that has negatively impacted others now. That negative thought impacted another could have contributed to an emotional imbalance for them. Same with negative words and of course the actions. So when people have a depression or an anxiety or a fear or an anger as a result of our um, lack of, of well thought out thoughts, words and actions, then we have created in essence a uh, entanglement a quantum entanglement with that other person. So now we have negative information on our vibration and we have offered negative information to their vibration, thereby entangling us. This then creates a quagmire for our long-term health and wellness. All suffering in life, according to the Tao healing wisdom, is related to the negative information that we hold on our vibration, our soul. <clears throat> when we can transform that negative frequency and information, we can heal much, much faster. It doesn't matter if we're talking about um, an emotion or physical pain or a relationship issue. It, it does not matter what the you're trying to transform. What matters is the root cause. Tao healing addresses things at the level of the root cause. In previous episodes, I have actually offered Tao healing, and we will start doing that next week. A very important teaching 
that Master Shah reminds us is that when we rec recognize, when we acknowledge the mistakes that we have made in offering unpleasant thought, words, or actions to others, then we have the immediate opportunity to start healing much, much faster. Forgiveness practice is one of the most advanced practices to accomplish healing much faster. Now, last week I went into detail how we might have this emotion or that emotion as a result of causing it upon others. This week, I'm going to focus on three unique ways we can use a forgiveness practice to help bring about greater forgiveness. The first one is forgiving others. The second one is asking for forgiveness. And the third one is self-forgiveness. Each one of these can contribute to uh, releasing the suffering from others and releasing our own suffering. When we make mistakes, when we harm others, that negative information stays on our frequency and vibration until it is transformed, until it is released. How does it get released? Through good service, through the creation of virtue by helping others to be happier and healthier, helping others to heal their negative emotions, for example. There are multiple ways in which we can reverse that, but forgiveness is one of the most powerful ones. Let's start with asking forgiveness from others. When we ask forgiveness from others, <clears throat> we are saying, I made a mistake. This requires the release of ego. It requires the release of attachment. Well, they hurt me first, you might say. Why should I ask forgiveness for what I did? They did that to me first. This is ego. If you recognize the truth that I've been trying to share with you about Tao healing, the reason somebody barked at you first or hurt you first, and then you barked back, and now you're in this ego battle of who's right and who's wrong. The reason is because you guys have been doing this. It's not the first time you've gone back and forth creating suffering for each other. So when you ask forgiveness, you are saying, I want to release this negativity from my vibration." I no longer want to have this experience. I'm willing to realize that I might have harmed you through my thoughts, words, and actions first at a time that I don't remember. Or I'm willing to recognize that one of us needs to be free of ego and make the uh, accord of an olive branch. Have you ever noticed that when you offer forgiveness, or excuse me, that when you ask forgiveness, the other person forgives you, and then they also ask forgiveness. Isn't that interesting? Why? Because love is involved. Because both people know that they reacted inappropriately. That's why. So when we ask forgiveness, we are releasing us from our own prison cell that we create. Our heart our heart center is the conduit through which our happiness occurs. When our heart center is blocked, it will show up for us in life in the form of depression and anxiety and overreaction or underreaction, but definitely imbalanced emotions. This is a direct result of imbalance in our heart center. When we take responsibility for releasing the blockages from our heart center and we ask for forgiveness for a mistake. Even if we still have an agenda, well, they did it to me first. You know, to go deeper. What we do not know 
is have we done something to them that caused them to do something to us? Well, no, I did not, is your response. Well, you do not remember anything from this life experience, but very possibly at a different time, maybe you did. And now is your time to be on the receiving end. When we ask forgiveness, we are acknowledging the bigger picture even the parts that we don't understand because we want to open our heart and heal. The second forgiveness is offering forgiveness. This is a tough one for a lot of people. I can never forgive them. What they did to me is unforgivable. Okay. If you want to hold that pain and that suffering in your vibration, that's exactly what will occur with that kind of a statement. What you're in essence saying when you say, I will never forgive them, is you're saying, I want to hold on to this forever. I want to cause suffering to myself forever. <laughs> That's what you're saying. It's the nature of frequency and vibration. It's not something that is questionable. Now, but how can I ever forgive them? you say. The answer is you bring yourself to the higher consciousness. Maybe I did this to them first. Maybe I didn't. If I did, how could I ever possibly ask forgiveness because what they did to me was unforgivable. But what if you did that to them and they felt the same way? You don't know. We truly do not know. But here's a slice of wisdom that's important for everyone here to understand. Absolutely everything happens for a reason. There is nothing in all creation that is accidental. Nothing. So if it happened for a reason then you need to give at least 50% merit to the possibility that you might have caused that suffering upon another, even though you cannot remember it. Everything happens for a reason. By offering forgiveness, you are not saying it's okay what you did because it's not okay what they did. When you offer forgiveness, it doesn't have to be in person. This is soul healing. This is healing at the level of soul. You can ask forgiveness and offer forgiveness at the level of soul. You see, when, when two souls, when two people, excuse me, when two personalities come together and they have, you know, personal war going on, could be a coworker, could be a spouse, parent to child, it doesn't matter, two people. When that occurs, those are personalities having an argument, having a spat, having a disagreement, having a, you, I'll throw pain at you, you throw pain at me. That's personalities. You know what the souls of those two personalities are doing? The souls are shaking their head going, oh my God, when are these two fools going to figure it out? They did this to them last time. This is the opportunity to forgive so they can all be clean. Everybody walks away happy. It comes off of their vibration. We can all move forward. And the souls just shake their head, go, well, I guess they're never going to get this one right, are they? And then they go their own way. Okay, we'll see you next lifetime. When we forgive, we are in an elevated state of consciousness. We say, I do not want to rattle the cage and say, you did this to me. I do not want to be the one that gives you outside of this cage empowerment to control my emotions, to control my state of mind, because that is what you are doing when you say, I'm not going to forgive you. You're giving them power over you. You're keeping your heart closed. They win. You lose. Is that what you want? So when 
when or if you think about the comment, I will never forgive them, what they have done is unforgivable, take into consideration those truths. The third forgiveness is self-forgiveness. This is a tough one for a lot of people. How do I forgive myself? Self-forgiveness is probably and actually one of the most important. When you look at the emotions that people have, fear, anger, worry, grief, sadness, anxiety, depression, if you were able to dissect the roots of those, you'd probably find a good 40% of that depression, of that grief, of that anger, is probably self-beating one up, beating yourself up. I can't believe I let them do that to me again. I'm so stupid, right? All these, these different things, many of them, by the way, we did when we were children. Somebody might have abused you physically, sexually. So you blame that on your fear of being in a relationship or whatever your, you know, your apprehension or fear is. You blame that for your um, depression. Right? They abused me. They, they, they hurt me. You can. You can hold on to that. You can possibly recognize what has been shared already. And you can forgive yourself. I forgive myself for thinking the way I thought when I was 7, 8, 9, 10 years old. I forgive myself for not standing up for myself. I forgive myself for not protecting my mother or my father when my dad was beating my mom or whatever it is. I forgive myself for this last relationship I was in for not getting out sooner. I forgive myself for not allowing myself to have or find true love. I forgive myself for making excuses when I really should be doing ABC. Self-forgiveness is saying I recognize that I am now a much more conscious and aware and awake and grown up person. And the ways that I brought myself to an event or an experience last week, two months ago, two years ago, five years ago when I was a kid, I now have a much higher level of intelligence and would not have reacted or responded in that way in the past. Now I'm much more conscious and aware. So I forgive myself for these uh, approaches in the past that I did not have the wisdom or intelligence to respond differently to. In fact, if I had not had those experiences, I would not have the wisdom and intelligence I have today. So I definitely forgive myself and I'm grateful that I had those experiences, right? You want to frame everything so that you can open your heart center I forgive myself. Let it all go. I forgive everyone else for ever harming me. Let it all go. It's not okay what they did, but is it okay for you to rattle the cage and point the finger outside of the cage and saying, you did this to me. By the way, could you come over here and unlock my prison cage so I can stop crying and whining? Right? Because that's what we do when we refuse to forgive. Now, there are some of us that say, yeah, I've forgiven them. Yeah, I, I've done my forgiveness. I'm good. I'm good. I let them go. I challenge you. When you think of that person that you think you forgave, do you not want to see them again? Do you, could you have a conversation with them? Do you have compassion for them? Could you smile and have compassion and say, I'm glad I'm not with them. And I have great compassion for their journey. They have a lot to learn. I'm grateful that the experience between us has taught me a lot. I wish them the very best. And you mean it when you say that. All of these forms of forgiveness are done at the level of soul. I'm going to lead you through a forgiveness practice now. You can do this same practice on your own moving forward. And I recommend that you do something like this on a daily basis. It will significantly benefit virtually any suffering you have. You can apply this practice to anything 
but we're going to apply it today to emotions. Okay. So I invite you to close your eyes now, wherever you're at. And I'm going to offer a series of words that you may or may not agree with. If you do, then by all means, repeat them. We're going to do a forgiveness practice for those who have harmed us or that we have harmed them with emotions. So let us begin. You can repeat silently whatever you agree with. Dear all souls of humanity and all animals, all souls, I love you. Could you please come to this soul communication? Now you can choose one person. You can choose one person you have a major emotional imbalance with and invite that one soul here. And you can repeat the same words. Do that now. I'll give you 10 seconds to invite that one person you have problems with. Maybe they cause great emotions for you. How do I do that? Dear the soul of my my ex, blah, 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 please come. Okay. Now, the, their soul is there. I wish to sincerely apologize any mistakes that I have made in our communications. I have definitely had negative thoughts, definitely communicated negative words, and I'm pretty sure I've offered some unpleasant actions, all of which have contributed to the unpleasant emotions that are now present for me. If I have caused you in this lifetime or any lifetime these same kind of unpleasant emotions, if I have ever spoken to you in such an unpleasant way, offered unpleasant actions, continually thought unpleasant thoughts, and as a result, you or any soul anywhere in time, if you were negatively impacted and had a similar unpleasant emotion as I now have, truly I apologize. Truly I sincerely apologize and ask forgiveness. I have not enjoyed this emotion. I have, it has been debilitating in many ways. So if I have ever caused that same kind of debilitating emotion in this or any lifetime with any soul, I bow my head in regret and sincerely ask forgiveness. I have also been on the receiving end of some very unpleasant communications. Negative thoughts, I am sure, have been thrown at me. Certainly, I have been on the receiving end of negative, unpleasant words that have contributed to this emotion and actions as well. It's not okay what you may have done. It's not. Just like it's not okay that I might have done this to you or to others in a time that I cannot remember. But I love myself enough to release my heart, to offer you my unconditional forgiveness. You owe me nothing. I certainly do not want to be in your vibration moving forward, but I recognize that you might have given me this experience because I gave it to you first, and now we've both had it. I really wish to open my heart and release this permanently from my field, from my vibration. And if I have harmed you first, again, I am so sorry. Let us both forgive each other, whatever mistakes we have made. And let us choose to be much wiser, more loving, kind, and compassionate in the future. I forgive you. Please forgive me. And now let us offer self-forgiveness. I forgive myself having this unpleasant emotion, making excuses this whole time. I forgive myself for putting myself down for not doing this or not doing that, not thinking this or thinking that. I forgive myself 
for any lack of action that I knew I maybe should have done. I forgive myself for every negative thought that I have ever given myself related to this emotion. I forgive myself. For this and all lifetimes that I have harmed my own value, my own worth. I forgive myself for not realizing that much of my negative thoughts and judgments and self-criticisms came to me when I was not the same wise person I am today. That I could have had less wisdom, less knowledge, and less understanding in those earlier times, even last week, I'm much wiser now than even last week. I forgive myself because whatever thoughts that I had created and negative information I gave myself, I now recognize that it was based on the wisdom I had at that time. I love myself unconditionally. I'm an amazing person. So I forgive myself fully and completely and allow myself to recreate my new life, letting go of these old patterns. I have forgiven all the souls who have contributed to this emotion. I ask forgiveness to all the souls that I might have given this kind of emotion, and I forgive myself. I thank the source soul song of love, peace, and harmony for blessing all of these souls as I chant for a few minutes to bless everyone. So I will chant for a few minutes and you can chant along with me. <clears throat> and then we'll complete today's podcast. Lu la lu la li. Lu la lu la la li. Lu la lu la la li. Lu la. Lula, li, lula, lula, li, lula. I love my heart and soul. I love all humanity. And join hearts and souls together. Love, peace, and harmony. Love, peace, and harmony. Let us sing one more time. Open your heart. Let it go. Lula, lula, li. Lula, lula, li. Lula. Lula, li, lula, lula, li, lula, lula, li, lula. I love my heart and soul. I love all humanity. Join hearts and souls together love peace and harmony love peace and harmony how oh, thank you thank you thank you and we ask all the beautiful souls who have come to hear this forgiveness practice to please return so this is an example of a simple but very effective forgiveness practice and why it's so important to offer three different types of forgiveness to both ask, to offer, and to offer to yourself. <clears throat> For those of you that have just stumbled across this live stream, this is a podcast called The Healing Source. You can learn more at my website, wellspringoflight.com. I have an amazing membership program there. I also offer individual services. And by signing up for the podcast or my newsletter, then you'll be made abreast of the activities that are happening uh, moving forward. 
So I want to thank each of you for coming to today's live stream. I see you all popping in here. I mention you by name. I'm very grateful, Christy, Pat, Sunlit, Kevin, and all the others who haven't mentioned their name. Thank you for coming. And I apologize to those that I said I would start at noon. I had to start a half hour earlier because my uh, teacher is doing a special class uh, at the time that I planned on starting at noon today. So for those that came in just uh, not too long ago, please go watch the recording. It's both on YouTube and Facebook, and it'll be ready in just a few minutes, okay? So thank you, everybody, and we'll see you all very soon. I'll be back here next week, same time. And by the way, starting tomorrow, I will start doing um, Tao One, The Way of All Life. I'll be reading the book uh, with Master Shah, uh, and I'll be doing the book series, so I can go through the book every day. So it will be at noon um, daily, and uh, this is an opportunity for all of us to learn more about the Tao. Okay, so thank you, everyone. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.